What do two world-renowned bodybuilders have to do with aviation safety? A lot more than you would think. Stay tuned to find out more. This is the Safety Wire Podcast. A 2021 article on fatigue in aviation opens with a quote from Charles Lindbergh in 1953, discussing the fatigue he felt during his 1927 transatlantic solo flight. He states, My mind clicks on and off. I try letting one eyelid close at a time while I prop the other open with my will. My whole body argues dully that nothing, nothing life can attain is quite so desirable as sleep. My mind is losing resolution and control. The article continues on to say that Lindbergh was not the first to identify fatigue as a risk factor in aviation. In 1938, the Civil Aeronautics Act addressed the issue of air crew duty hours and flight times. And now EASA, or the European Aviation Safety Agency, just recently in 2020 identified the state of well-being and fitness for duties as a top priority showing that this continues to be an ongoing problem in the aviation industry. Welcome, everyone, to the Safety Wire podcast. I am your host, Tim Wade. My guests today are the definition of a power couple, both in career and stature. They are award-winning bodybuilders and fitness educators focused on mental and physical improvement. Together, they are the founders of HitchFit, the world's number one online personal training program. Micah and Diana Lassert, it is a pleasure to have you with me today. Oh, what a blessing it is to be here. All right, we are excited to get into this. I know um, a lot of people are going to be itching. Why do we have fitness influencers and instructors on an aviation podcast? But I'm going to tie that all together. I think you guys have some great information for our community. But let's learn a little bit about you guys. So give me the story. How did you two get together? And then how did HitchFit get started? Oh, man, great story. Um, MySpace and Las Vegas is how we got together. Obviously, okay. God entered twined in all of that two very odd places for us to actually meet but um it started on myspace we were you know kind of just messaging each other back and forth it was very much a friendship type of communication really too it wasn't like a baby baby type of talk myspace mm -hmm. back day um but we knew we were gonna uh, uh both be at the mr olympia which is a big fitness expo um and competition um usually in the late summer early fall and uh, we were like, hey, let's meet up and take a picture, say hello. Um, we did that. And then we spent the rest of the weekend together. And then she moved to Kansas City two months after that. And then we got married a few months, few years after that. Um, it was kind of one of those things. I mean, the minute I met, I felt like I had known her for many years and vice versa. I obviously was physically attracted to her, but even more so she was, you know, her foundation was proper with, with Christ. Um, and uh, she lived a very, very similar lifestyle, a very hard worker um, and disciplined and dedicated. And so a lot of the tangibles that I was looking for, I wasn't actually even looking at that particular point. I was single and mm -hmm. I mean, I was going to Vegas. We were going to go have fun <laughs> and whatnot. And uh, uh, God gave me something much more beautiful than anything that I could imagine in Vegas. So. Yeah, that's, that's incredible. That's kind of how we met. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's really interesting how well God can intervene in a place called Sin City and oh, pull you I back know. to um, <laughs> yeah. pull pull you back to His righteousness for sure. <laughs> that's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> So how did that build into HitchFit? Obviously, you guys have this great common ground. You have this similar work ethic. You have obviously similar um, <clears throat> physical stature that you guys are trying to continuously improve yourself. How did you guys build that into this massive online platform? And you guys are operating gyms as well, correct? Yeah, so when when we had met that time in Vegas and when I moved here, Micah had, he had, we both knew that we're, our passion and our purpose were in alignment as far as what we wanted to do. We had worked in corporate gym settings and we knew that there was just a lot of things in that world that we didn't like just because it never focused on the people first and actually um, helping people change their lives. So we wanted to create something new. So when I moved here, he he had the concept for Hitch Fit in his mind. And so I kind of came in as like the female component of it. And mm -hmm. in 2009, in the middle of a, a, a recession, we were like, mm -hmm. let's start a business. <laughs> and, uh, and it actually started with our, and you know, which actually ended up being perfect because 
we've learned in times of recession, people kind of focus on the things they can control. And one of the controllables is actually our health. And so we thrived, even though it was a time of recession. We started with the online personal training, which no one really had heard of. Micah was playing around with it a little bit prior mm -hmm. to us meeting. And it was like this, what is online personal training? So we were one of the first in that space to launch it. And then maybe six months after we started the online side of things, we were able to open our first gym. So we had a physical location so we could be one-on-one -on -one training with people kind of doing this. I mean, doing the same thing we were doing with online clients, but they actually were having our, our personal time with them. And we really just, we, 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 the foundation of our business was always just, just putting our faith first and putting the people first and trusting that God was going to bring the right people to us, that we were going to help them transform. And then that was what was going to grow our business was their friends and family seeing this true change in them and them wanting to come to us. So it was very unconventional. You know, some, some early mentors were like, you guys are crazy that you're doing things this way. And we were like, well, you know, this is really the path we feel God is taking us on. And we feel like if we, if we trust him in these ways, he's going to, he's going to bless our efforts and what we're doing. So that was 14 years ago. And yeah, it just, um, we've grown the online side of things to 81 countries. And, um, oh we, my have, gosh. <laughs> and we have, <laughs> uh, we have, we now have two training studios in Kansas city and a team of trainers that work there with us. And, um, we've helped people lose over 600,000 pounds of fat. And now we've also launched a, a new business called Rock Body Retreats, where we are kind of taking a lot of what we do with Hitchbit, but doing it more in a retreat setting with people and really digging in and being able to do work more in that environment, too. So, we, you know, that's kind of where it started and kind of where it's, you know, obviously lots of bumps along the way and of course. challenges, but... Um, through it all, just we've we've just been trying to be faithful and obedient to what God has told us to do, and He's just you know it's been beautiful. We have our plans; He's got His plans. So sometimes we're he, we're like, here's what we want to do, and He's like, nope, you're going this way, and we're like, okay. And <laughs> yeah. it always ends up being the best. Yeah. So it's it's been an incredible journey. Yeah. Faithful following, you know, there's never there's never a story in the Bible where there's not bumps in the road where people take the easy path and then he uses that as an example it's 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 the broken it's the the called yeah. upon the difficult yeah. journeys yeah. and then those have the most impactful stories i've always talked about this with faith but you know i think fitness and finances are all the same way of it's not hey go do this it's hey look at the light inside me now that i've made an internal transformation with my faith i made an outward transformation with weight loss mm -hmm. see the example that has been done through me and that's what guides more people through it i've always said you know you see the cars at eight thousand bumper stickers on the back that, that's not what's going to bring them to christ that's not what's going to bring them to fitness it's truly setting that example and walking that path so that's right. awesome story that is that is yeah. incredible yeah. Um, so you guys touched on motivation a little bit already, but you know you've dedicated your careers and lives to fitness and self improvement. And at the you know the level you guys are at, it's more than just a normal job. It's all encompassing. You guys kind of live that lifestyle all the time. It's not for show. You know where do you find your motivation to not only you know do your nine to five basically, but to continuously improve and better yourselves and making this your entire lifestyle. So. I would, I would kind of direct motivation to discipline. Okay. I think discipline has to be in place because motivation is always up and down and left and right. So if you're only like hoping for motivation, then you're never going to show up on the days you don't feel like it. Discipline becomes a part of your DNA, a part of your habits and your identity. And so when the discipline is in place, you show up even on the days you don't feel like it because it's a part of who you are and how you identify yourself. And then like it really, you know, when, when we look at it from a faith standpoint, it's also how God identifies you. Like mm -hmm. he, he gave you this temple, this body and your faith and the choices that you make every single day are up to us. Like we glorify him by taking care of ourselves. And that starts with discipline. That is truly impactful. It's it's rare that I'm going to write down notes during during an interview because I always want to focus on like that. That's good yeah. because, you know, I'm I'm the king of making an excuse. You know, hey, oh my kids are up a little late. You know, I'm I'm a little too tired to make it to the gym. It's so easy to plug in an excuse to to not get into the word that day, not get to the gym that day. Um, and I think that discipline factor truly comes out and and pushes you towards your goals that you, you that you have. So. 
awesome. That that is a that is an incredible point you made there, Micah. Thank you for that. Um, so let's let's pull this into aviation now. So um, <clears throat> bring this full circle for us. So aviation obviously is an industry of travel, uh, but our infrastructure that we all rely on right now also relies on continuous travel. We have pilots, cabin crew, our maintenance technicians. We have mobile maintenance technicians all throughout the country that do a lot of travel and they work some crazy hours. You know. Uh, I'm gonna, I got a few questions pertaining to them. Per, first up, fatigue. You know, it's a huge risk factor in aviation, multiple studies, safety directives, mandated time for rest. Talk to me about how much sleep we should be getting and why that's important. And also the adverse effects if we're not maintaining that over time. Yeah, I mean, sleep, as far as as far as far our health and fitness goes, sleep is, is so critical. I mean, for I think people vary a little bit. Like, I let, love sleeping. Sleeping is, like, my favorite. I, I want to sleep, like, a long time. So, for me, it's, it's eight hours, and I think, in general, the recommendation is seven to eight hours. But then there are people that are built a little differently that can function still well on, like, Micah can function very well on less sleep than I can. Okay. He's more like a five to six hours. So I think it's first like knowing like and you you can when you start getting more in tune with your body, you're going to know if you're a seven to eight hour person or if you're a five to six hour person. But it is it really is absolutely critical. And I know sometimes, especially in, in a world like that, where there's a lot of travel and there's not, you know, you can have inconsistency with your schedules. It may be it may be hard to be able to do that consistently. I would just say tr tr try your best, you know, and. And even naps are really, I mean, if it's a nap, those actually can be very beneficial too. When we don't get enough sleep, I mean, it, it has such a negative impact on everything. Our, you know, our, especially our brain function, our, our cognitive abilities, um, you know, if you're talking about safety, it's like, that's, that's a huge risk of when our brains are not operating at, operating at full function. Um, and the other thing is just our emotional stability and our, our ability to handle emotional things that come up when you're tired mm. you are far more likely to have an outburst you're far more likely to have like a more aggressive response to things than when you're well rested so it's it's not even i mean for a fitness purposes even just for weight loss it's actually mm -hmm. really critical for the for sleep is when our bodies recover after we train but it's also really important for for just weight loss and our hormone um, how our hormones stay balanced so i think it all kind of pours over and it's often overlooked like even in our world people are like train 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 i'm gonna sleep three hours and i'm gonna get up and work out super hard every single day and it's like okay but when your body gets run down you're just breaking things down and breaking things down and you're not even getting that time for repair so mm -hmm. it's extremely important i would say in general it's a six to eight hour time frame that is the best and i would just say i know that's not possible all the times but but any time that it is possible just whether that's and sometimes it is possible and people just want to stay up late and you know watch shows you could actually be sleeping and, and just think about how the greater impact that would have if you just get to bed a little earlier and maybe wake up a little bit earlier uh that's so you know i i've, I've heard from so many people and, and read a couple studies i've tried to do my research as well on it and it kind of seems like sleep could be that one thing that if it's not perfectly dialed in it could completely ruin all the progress you're trying to create you know even in the gym you know you know you're 90 to you know whatever 90 second to 120 second rest period in between sets you know that's super important but also outside of the gym and into normal life and as you said it depends it pushes so much onto your mental health, your emotional health. I love that you touched on that because I, I, I got young ones at home and there's two things. If they have not slept well and if they have not eaten, it you get the hanger and you get and you get the sleep <laughs> the sleep tantrums. And uh that's perfectly true. So it's you know, as a parent, I gotta maintain that perfect sleep cycle. And and I say me, it's a hundred percent my wife is perfect at maintaining that. And I'm just like, all right, give them a couple crackers, they'll be fine. Okay. So uh awesome insight for that one. Yeah. So as you know, as we mentioned our my this industry is completely on the road all the time. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it can be difficult to eat well while you're traveling. Uh, all of our airports and hotels and resorts tend to be geared 100% towards the tourist with two to 3,000 calorie meals offered all the time. What advice do you guys have for proper nutrition while you're away from home? Yeah, that, that's a great question. And over the years that we've had HitchFit and even before, we've been able to work with pilots. We've been able to work with flight attendants. So we actually know this one really well. And even truck drivers, awesome. like there's unique 
jobs that require a little bit more preparation than than normal people, let's say, with normal jobs. Um, and so a lot of it is is the prep of essentially, regardless of where you're at, let's say a flight attendant or a flight pilot, and you're going from city to city to city, but you do have the ability to look towards where you're about to go to, okay? So we're flying into Atlanta. You know that you can either um, find a grocery store that's close, order some food at maybe, you know, your your hotel. You have a small little cooler, something that you can actually bring some food in that that is legal to get on the plane and whatnot. Um, uh, 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 protein powders, stuff like that. Um, sometimes beef jerkies, you know, that are lower in, in sugar, little snack meals to get you through. So we have like whole meals and then we have little snack meals that are kind of in between that just okay. get you through the day. If you're eating five to six meals a day, um, uh, what we want to stay away from is like really large meals two or three times a day. The body mm -hmm. just can't, it can't burn it down. You end up gaining more fat storage. There's, there's a lot of stuff that goes on with that. Also, from a pilot standpoint, like overload of carbohydrates, you're going to have your high and then it's going to be crashing. And I would mm -hmm. assume with a lot of pilots, too, you're starting to look at, you know, hey, I got to be alert. So I'm going to start pouring some stimulants in. I'm going to start, you know, some some different, you know, to, to get my my focus clear. You can do so much change just with nutrition and fitness alone. Like when your body is operating at its hundred or really close to a hundred, like you're, you're not, you don't need the stimulants anymore. Like the body mm -hmm. is, is really, and it goes back to that discipline. But once you build those schedules that are in place, you know, where your highs and lows are during the day. Um, and, and essentially, you know, you can kind of prepare around that. Um, but yeah, just, just always being prepared with, with having your food in advance. If mm -hmm. you're, if you're going into an airport and, and, you're going to give control to somebody else, which means they're going to be prepping the food for you or you're buying it at one of the little convenience stores. I mean, you got to understand you're going to you're going to pay the consequence for that, too. But even in all restaurants, you can order like a little bit better. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a grilled chicken sandwich. You can just have the grilled chicken with, you know, some veggies or something, you know, on the side, even if it's not perfect or higher in sodium or whatnot, like you still have the ability to go with that instead of wings, French fries and you know, a chili cheese coney type of, you know, so exactly. you, you, you still have the choice to eat a little bit healthier, even in an airport situation. Yeah, it was really difficult when I got back into aviation after getting out of the army um, to understand when I'm traveling as an employee, I'm not a tourist. Just yeah. because I'm in an airport, just because I'm in a nicer hotel, or, you know, I went from the cold Cleveland climate down to warm Florida, I'm not there on vacation. I should not be eating like I'm on vacation either. So um, that's a great perspective. Preparation is everything when it comes to that. Um, preparing for Obviously, nutrition is a huge part of the battle, but exercise is another part of that as well. And preparing for proper exercise while you're on the road, I always like to jump on you know, TripAdvisor and check out the pictures of the hotel to make sure they have at least somewhat of a fitness area there as well. What can you tell me uh, or what advice do you have for people who are traveling? Can they stay in shape in the hotels? Can they, uh, if the hotel doesn't have a fitness room or it's in a shady area and they don't want to go running, what kind of advice do you have for uh, exercising on the go? And obviously, I've seen your post. Not everyone has access to that wonderful wooden gym that you've been to a couple times, <laughs> even though that thing looked pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, and it's absolutely possible. Honestly, if you're staying in a hotel, there's so much that you can even just do with your body weight. Um, and so a lot of my clients that travel a lot, I actually tell them resistance bands do not take up a lot of space in your luggage. They are very lightweight. They are very easy to take with you places. So even if you literally have, you know, this just a very small space in a hotel room, it you can do body weight, but if you bring some bands, it's going to add even more variety in there for you. You don't even have to leave your hotel room. If you have, you know, I would say first, just look for places. If you have the opportunity to choose where you're going, look for a place that has a gym, or if you're going to be there for a little while, look to see if there's a, a gym nearby that you can work out at. Um, they have the like those class pass things now, like wherever you wherever you go, you can try out new things. So there's all there's literally always a way that you can stay active. I mean, even if it's in your hotel and you're afraid to go outside, find the staircase. Like if it's a two or three story mm -hmm. place, 
go up and down the stairs, you know, or go up and down the hallway. Like, it doesn't matter if people think you're weird. Like, who cares? <laughs> like, literally, who cares? But it's, so it's like, you don't need a lot of space to be able to move your body. And it doesn't even have to be for a long period of time. You can get your heart rate up. It, it can be maybe 15 to 20 minutes of just getting your heart rate up and working your muscles. We've had people over the last 14 years, we have so many clients that travel all the time. If you want it, then there is a way to do it. Now there's tons of things you can use as excuses, but if you actually want to do it, then it's absolutely doable. You have the time, you have the space. And usually if you're in a hotel, like you don't have the distractions of home, you know, you don't, you're not having to feed the dogs and the cats and, you know, take care of the kids and things. So you actually do have that time. So it's, it's 100% doable. It's if you're willing to actually take the steps that it will require, you know, it still is discipline. If you're willing to take those steps. We, uh, we, we travel quite a bit, um, mm -hmm. ma mainly vacation stuff and hike. We go through hiking season. We do, we, we have stuff with rock body or other business and whatnot as well. And, um, it's one of our very favorite things to do. So I love this, love this question in general, like we love finding really unique gyms, regardless mm -hmm. of where we go, whether it be a mom and pop gym or sometimes a bigger gym or whatnot, you know, we're going to Costa Rica next week. You know, there's two gyms that we go while we're there in two different areas that we absolutely love. We, we know the staff now cause we go there quite often to Costa Rica. And so, you know, it's just like, that, that can be just a part of your trip as well. If you have the time to do that, if not, like you just said with it, like look in advance, what hotel are you staying at? Find the pictures, figure out what you got. Most mm -hmm. of the time they have at least dumbbells up to 25s or something. They have a couple pieces of cardio, even in the smallest of, of hotels. Mm -hmm. Well, and that circles back to everything you guys have been discussing. Discipline and preparation are key to being successful with body and, and mental improvement. Um, <clears throat> So we've talked about current plans and how to maintain and improve yourself. But, you know, if you have no idea where to start, you haven't gone on this journey, you haven't done any research, someone who's fresh into wanting to make their make an improvement in themselves, they, they notice an, an issue and they want to correct it. What advice do you have? What's the first step or focus area that somebody should have when they're trying to better themselves both mentally and physically? I would say that the very first step is take a look at how you're eating because, um, you, like your, your, your strength training, your cardio, that's also going to be important. But first, like take a look at what you're eating. And if you find that you're eating a lot of processed foods, a lot of sugars, like the first step is just trying to eliminate those things and get more whole foods into your diet. Um, you know, whether that's, you know, good, healthy proteins, like your chicken, your turkey, your fish, those things, um, you know, healthier carbohydrates that are whole foods, like sweet potatoes and, or brown rice, like things like oats is a good one. And, you know, mm -hmm. healthier fats, like start looking at what you're eating. And if, if you're eating something that has a label and the ingredients, and there's more than a couple of ingredients on it, then you're, then you're filling your body with a lot of stuff that, that you don't really need. So I would say number one, just take a look at what you're eating and what you're drinking. Like if you're if you're consuming all a bunch of soda all day, it's like these things are going to be impacting your health, your brain, your body, and just in such negative ways, especially when it's it's a consistent thing and it's overconsumption. So it's number one is look at what you're eating, and number two, just start moving your body. Like whether that's walking, whatever that may be, like strength training. I know it can be intimidating to some people; they don't know what they're doing. So I would say get a coach if you have no foundation foundation of that, like find someone that can help you with that is so that you can learn how to do things properly so that you can learn how to do things. So you're not hurting yourself, but figure out how are you going to get your body moving? How are you, what are you putting in your body and how are you going to get your body moving? And it can be a little simple thing. Sometimes people mm -hmm. aren't ready out the gate for some, you know, big, massive change. Some people are, but some people it's just, it's going to just take those little steps being honest about what you're actually doing though. A lot of people deny, oh, I eat healthy. And then if you actually look at what you're eating and maybe just write it down for the day so that it's like a lot of things, it's like you ate this and you ate that. And oh, I had this bag of Cheetos, but I forgot about that. You know, so it's like you can write it down and actually be honest and take a look at what you're doing and then understand, and then understand that if you make some of those small changes, it's going to start having a big positive impact in your life. The other thing that I would, uh, especially very early on is like, everybody wants the result. And a lot mm -hmm. of that starts with like the aesthetic. They see this body that they want to be, or they remember a place that they were. 
I mean, the aesthetic is, is, is a part of it, but once you actually go through full transformation, you realize like it's really just a bonus to everything else you get because you get that ability to wake up every single day and feel your absolute best. And mm -hmm. like most people have no idea what that actually feels like. You know, we can bring this over into aviation in your space or fitness or or being a mother and a father, a pastor, whatever it is like like most people have no idea what it actually feels to be healthy. I'm obsessed with making sure I feel like that every single day. And that's why I make the decisions that I make so that I can then pour into everybody the way that I need to, the way that God needs me to pour into people. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you you like you want the result. But are you willing to do what it takes to get the result? That's what it comes down to. And so when people say, well, what do I got to do? Well, you got to change everything. Mm -hmm. And that's like, whoa, you know, like that, that's a lot. And in a lot of situations, you know, I had a guy at a grocery store the other day, he goes, man, dude, you're totally jacked, man. How do I get like that? And I go, every single choice that you make every single day is about looking and feeling your absolute best. He's like, whoa, mm -hmm. dude, that's heavy. And I go, dude, but once you taste it and once you get it, <laughs> you'll never let it go. Because you operate, you, you know this in like aviation world, you know, you guys are just cruising, but there's another level. There's mm -hmm. that level where you can press that engine and you're like, whoa, you got a Learjet just rolling out, you know, across mm -hmm. the sky. And and that that is that level that we can maintain for hours and hours a day where the mind is just like doo -doo 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 -doo. i mean it, it's unbelievable mm -hmm. yeah to get to the point of where you are completely happy and healthy where you are physically and then wanting to continue to strive it takes like you said complete dedication over every aspect of your life yep. and uh diana to a point that you made of thinking that you are healthy uh i know i dropped uh quite a bit of weight a couple of years back when I actually started first started talking to Micah and um, I thought I was eating healthy too. And I'm like, Oh man. So I need some protein at the end of the day. So I would make a honey peanut butter sandwich on wheat bread to close out my day. And then my wife's like, maybe you should track calories and just see where you're at. And I'm like, honey, I'm eating 480 calories and then going to sleep. And you know, that's yeah. not good at all. Um, so I, a lot of this comes back to, as you guys have said, you know, dedication, preparation, and part of preparation is education, knowing yeah. what you're putting into your body. And as you guys have both said, that ingredients list, if it's enormous, um, obviously you're putting in a ton of junk and extra additives into it. I've always heard the get the single ingredient foods are, are the best for you guys. Um, I know we're getting a little close to the end of our time and I wanted to open it up. Is there any other topics or any other uh, things you, you guys wanted to touch on today? Well, I think for the, spe the thing specifically for your audience is just, I, I can't stress enough how, you know, when I was reading like the notes that you sent over and just how the, the concerns of safety in the aviation mm -hmm. world and how much impact our physical fitness and health has on the safety. And I was like, my, my father actually worked for a hydroelectric company for 50 years and was just always about safety. And so I've actually had a lot of talks with him kind of in a similar lane of just how if people like those safety risks are so dramatically reduced when we actually take care of our bodies and our brains um, I mean just strength training alone it's just being able to have better posture being able to have stronger control over your body being able to have better um, just strengthen your bones the ability to perform tasks heavy lifting or whatever it might be mm -hmm. improved balance just um, how you're feeding your feeding your brain just to be able to have more focus and more, um, you know, reduce cognitive decline. So it's just, um, if I can just say anything to your audience, it's just really take a look at, it's not just what we see on the outside that changes, like there's the physical changes, but as far as just job improvement and being able to do your job at a higher level at a higher level of excellence if you will take care of your body and your brain you're going to be able to perform at those at just significantly higher levels 
That's incredible advice. I actually spoke with a technician last year. He'd been in aviation for 40 years and there were certain types of aircraft, smaller aircraft in certain areas of an aircraft. He was never physically able to go do those maintenance tasks. There were parts of his job he could not do and he ended up cutting weight. And now he's actually able to get into the back end of these aircrafts. He's able to work on the small Learjets, the small Cessnas. I mean, he was stuck on the large cabin, which we all love the large cabin aircraft because they're, they're, they're wonderful and they're luxurious, but he was always wanted to get into those small aircraft. And I was so, uh, so excited for him when, when he did drop some weight and he was able to make that. Um, Micah and Diana, thank you guys so much for not only your perspective on physical and uh, mental health, but um, your guys' faith walk and how open you are with your faith online. I think that is truly part of uh, some part of great health is to not only have great faith, great fitness, great mental clarity. It, it all comes f- full circle to have, um, you know, that peace inside yourselves to be able to actually push yourselves farther. So thank you guys for being on the program. This has been one of the most incredible interviews I've been a part of. I cannot uh, thank you guys enough for being here. Oh, you bet. And I, I got to leave you with one note. So go uh, for there's, it. There's a small piece of, of my heart that is in the aviation. So when I was in college, I worked at uh, a small executive airport. So I marshaled in the small little Cessnas, the high wings. I used to fuel them. We used to tow, and I got to I got to know a lot of the pilots and the and the, and the mechanics and whatnot. And it was one of the coolest jobs I ever had. It was hot on that tarmac, you know, during the summer months. But but uh, what a cool job and what a cool group of people. We we love it. Um, you know, we always say once you get into aviation, it's it's rare that you break out of it. And uh, you know, the technicians, the family, it's just, you know, we all know everybody. There's not a whole lot of competitive edge to, it, especially when it comes to safety. We share ideas all the time, but it, it's so cool. And it's like, hey, you know, I was with Bombardier and I was with there, and it's like we all know each other. And we meet up at our conventions, kind of like with you guys in the fitness world. It's a small, tight knit world. Aviation's about the same way. But if you guys are ever in Cleveland and you want to go tow an aircraft. <laughs> I'll get your license awesome, and we'll man. get you out there. We'll, we'll at least awesome, we'll let man. you walk the aircraft. All right. Well, thank you guys for being here. Thank you so much for your time today. All right, guys. Take too. care.